Okay, so if you guys are looking for a budget tactical light with some useful features on it, I think I may just have the thing for you, so stay tuned. All right, so recently SearGuard sent me this light, and the reason why I decided to take this light on and review it is because I wanted to compare it to my Olight. I have a ton of Olights. I've been using them for years. I don't do videos on lights because, I mean, it's just redundant. But I decided to do this one because of the few features this one has in comparison to the Olight. So we're going to hop down the bench. We're going to compare them. I'm going to show you guys why I think this is a good budget option if you don't want to spend big money on a light. So let's take a look. All right, so let's take a look at the SearGuard PFL Tactical Light. This is the package it comes in. I always like to show you guys how things come packaged. Uh, there's nothing to this. It's just cardboard and some rickety plastic in here. You got your user manual. It's comprehensive. I already read through that. Um, you get your Allen wrenches to attach it to your 1913 rail, and you also get M-lock attachments, which I'll show you what that's for in a second. So nothing exciting in the package. Uh, just your standard cardboard box and plastic and your extras here, like I said. Okay, so let's take a look at what you get in the package. Obviously, is the light. This is the SearGuard PFL. It has SearGuard badging on each side of it. You got your standard 1913 rail set up right here. And it has a LED light here, so when you're charging it, it glows red. And then when it's done, it glows green. Now, what's a little interesting on this one is I'm going to compare this to an Olight that I have because for a budget light, it shares some of the features that the Olight I use has. And we're going to talk about that in a second. And one of the reasons why I did like it and want to take it on is because I'm a big fan of magnetic charging. And this has a magnetic charge right here. It has USB-A and you have your magnetic base here that goes on. I like that. I like internal batteries with magnetic charging because I don't have to fuss. Once it's mounted, I don't have to pull it out. Like a lot of the lights out there, the stream lights, they're all CR123. Those batteries are expensive. Yes, you can buy rechargeable ones, but then you got to keep on screwing it, putting it in and out. I hate that. That's why I went to Olight years ago. Olight has the magnetic base. You snap it on and a rock and roll. So this same thing, you snap this on. It's not the same as Olight, but it's still magnetic nevertheless, which I like. So you get that. And they also included a pressure switch. And the difference in this pressure switch from the Olight, which I'll bring that in in a second, we'll talk about it, is this one has a, has a micro eighth jack here, like a headphone jack that plugs in, which in my opinion on this light is kind of a pro. The Olight one is magnetic. It can be ripped off. This one actually plugs in here in the back. There's a little rubber grommet here. You un untake that out of the hole and then you plug this thing in and now your pressure switch is there which activates the light and i'll show you guys on the wall here the beams in comparison in a few i'm not going to go outside and do beam shots i'll tell you my thoughts on this but for a budget light under 50 bucks i think this light's pretty good so again you get the pressure switch and this little rubber boot here that covers the uh the hole which is kind of it's kind of a little strange to get it in there but it does go back in now this pressure switch on the underside has M lock in there. And like I said, you get the M lock stuff in the bag here. So if you want to slap this on your rifle, you got M lock, you can put this on the side of your rail and, and you got your pressure switch and your light will be mounted up front. So you get a nice, nice pressure switch with M lock or regular 1913 setup, however you want to mount it. Same thing with the light. This light is 500 lumens and the hot spot on this is okay. It's not bad. I think this light will be good application for, you know, if you're just, close quarters in the house or something you want to throw a cheap light on a backup gun or something i think this would be a good option but for me i run o lights but i mean again we're gonna do a quick comparison here i think for under 50 bucks this is a pretty good light this is made out of plastic it's not aluminum or nothing but pretty good construction i mean for a budget light i don't think it's bad i've seen worse lights out there this light's actually pretty pretty good for being a, a plastic light so i mean not bad there so let's take a look at the o light all right actually before we bring in the o light let's just take a quick look at the features of this it's got one button here. There's a rubber button on the bottom here. And how you're going to work this is you're going to press it for momentary and you can let off or you can push it and it'll be on. And then once it's on, you can double click it and it goes into strobe and you'll shut it off. You can do momentary, let it go. Or if you push it again, it's going to stay in strobe. Now to get it back, you just double click while it's in strobe. And then it goes back to single mode like that. So very easy to operate. There's not much going on for the UI interface on this. It's just on or strobe, which strobe could be nice if you want to disorient somebody breaking in the house. Strobe is a good feature. Double click it and it goes back. So that's the, the button down the bottom and how that's used. All right, so I'll bring in my Olight Warrior X here for a second. Now let's just compare the two for a minute. This is made of all aluminum. This thing's very robust. You got the magnetic tail switch and you have your pressure switch here that goes 1913 or you can mount it on M-Lock, same thing as the other one. And you got your 
your mount here for your 1913 on your rail. So if you had to buy all this, guys, this is like a $200 affair for this light. By the time you buy the pressure switch, the light, and the mount for your rifle, you're looking at a couple hundred bucks there. So this is an expensive light. Very robust light. Throws a lot farther. 2100 lumens. It's much brighter. It's better in every way, shape, and form. But the thing I'm trying to, trying to iterate here is for a budget light, this light isn't bad. It shares some of the same features as this with the magnetic charging and the pressure switch. It's not a bad budget option if you don't want to drop $200 plus on a light like this. If you just want to chuck this on a rifle for your truck or something for the backyard quick or in the house, a backup gun, this isn't a bad option for a light. Especially with the magnetic charging, like I said, which I'm a big fan of. Same thing with Olight. You pop this pressure switch off the back and you slap your Olight charger on the back and they charge. I like that in, in lights. I don't like changing batteries. I like having internal. So not bad. And again, I do like the fact that this SearGuard light has this plug in, so this can't get ripped out. I mean, obviously it could, but it's a lot easier for you to knock this off. The, ma the magnet on it's strong, but not strong enough if you were to bump around the corner or something and knock that off. You could still light it by using this button here. But again, this could be knocked off easy with this magnet on here. So that's, that's kind of a, a con for the Olight, where this is a plug in. So you take that little rubber boot out plug this in and there you go the lights on you got your pressure switch and if i tug on this it's, it's not coming off so pretty good there i'm pretty happy with uh that plug in i wish olight did that it seems like a better connection more solid so there's a pro for the sear guard light right there all right i'm going to show you guys on the wall the difference between the beam on them i don't think for 500 lumens this is a bad spill on it and a bad light again this would be for close quarters i wouldn't use this for outside looking in the yard um that's where the olight would would just crush this but I think, again, for a budget light, this isn't bad for inside or just a quick little truck gun light. But we're going to pan the camera up. I'm going to shine it on the wall here, and I'll show you guys the beam differences here. Okay, so first off, obviously, I'm going to show you guys the sear guard. And I'm very close to this wall. I'm, I'm four feet from the wall, so it's not going to be a big spill. But I want you guys to see the hot spot. That's more important than the spill. So if you point this like this here, you get an idea of the hot spot on it. It's got a decent spill once you open it up, but it's not a very... It's not a very bright light. It's 500 lumens, but I mean, this will get the job done. I've used it around the house, and it's not bad. Now I'll show you guys the old light. This is 2100 lumens. This has got a much bigger spill, a much farther throw. There's the old light. If you can see the hot spot on that, it's just super, super bright. This thing's got a really, really good centered hot spot and a nice spill on it. But again, you're talking a 200 plus dollar light to a budget light, sub 50 bucks. But again, not bad. Turn this thing on. It's got a nice hot spot on it. It's got a nice spill to it. It's not bad. I mean, for what this for what this is and the money, I think this is a really good option. So there's the look at the beams there. All right, so that was a look at the difference. Hopefully you guys can tell the difference between the hot spot and the, and the spill. But again, we're very close to the wall, so you couldn't. And I'm not going to go outside and do beam shots and all that. Uh, take it from me, guys. This thing is a thrower, the Olight. This thing throws pretty damn far. It's got a very good hot spot. But again, 2100 lumens versus 500 lumens. This one in a house, close quarters, backyard, look around, very close to the house. Uh, not a problem. This is very capable 500 lumen light. Uh, the hot spot's good on it. The spill isn't bad on it. It's pretty bright for what it is. And again, for a sub $50 light, I don't think you can go wrong with this, especially with the magnetic charging and the way this uh, pressure switch plugs in. I particularly like this setup. And it seems pretty robust, the plastic on it. I mean, I don't think it's going to take a hard hit. If you were to drop it, it may break. But again, for the price point, it's it's not a bad option. If you're just looking for something for your truck, uh, for your hunting shack, whatever, who knows the application. But if you want a cheap, pretty good light, I think you can't go wrong with this sear guard. All right, we're going to hop out for some final thoughts. Okay, so that was a quick look at the sear guard PFL tactical light. If you guys like this kind of content and like these kind of reviews and want to see them keep coming, want to help support the channel, I'm going to leave a... QR code here on the screen. If you guys want to buy me a cup of coffee and support the channel, that'd be great. If not, there's a free way for you guys to support the channel by hitting that like, share, and subscribe button. All right, that's going to wrap it up for this one, guys, and we'll see you guys in the next one.